name is uh, Bhavani. I'm Mohanji Acharya. Um, I got this opportunity to come live today with you. This is something that uh, I was avoiding for a long time because uh, I have talked about myself uh, numerous times in Mohanji's blogs and uh, my own experiences with different videos. So I had no desire to do this, how I met Mohanji series offered by Monji USA. So I, uh, so what happened is, the reason I'm doing this is um, during one of our pop sessions, um, I had a dream of Vanamali uh, Amma. She's a spiritual mother of Monji. And uh, when he started his spiritual journey, he uh, didn't know who he was and he went to her ashram in the Himalayas so she came in my dream one day and uh, the way it worked out is uh, uh, that was not the significant thing for me but what happened is that particular day um, I uh, had a, a devotee ask me a question uh, about how she went through some struggles in her life and uh, Looking at a question kind of reminded me that Monji is telling me to speak about my experience that I went through when I met him because uh, it was not a good experience for me. And I've always been very not in a happy place when I hear other people's experiences because they all have good experiences. And I always uh, allow myself to go sink deep down into a, a, a pit that... I avoid talking about myself um, because I never had those good experiences when I met him. It was a very turbulent time for me. And it, so it works out that uh, Mohanji is guiding me to do this. And yesterday I happened to hear uh, Devi Mohan's uh, um, uh, videos that she's been doing. I've been busy. I haven't watched any of her videos. But um, one of my friends with the anger, she said she happened to watch series six and I uh, she said it helped her. I said, okay, let me watch it. And I uh, watched that video and uh, it occurred to me, wow, she's talking about the same time that I had, that I met Mahonji and all the turbulent times that I had to go through. She was going through it in her own way as, as his wife and I was going through it as just newly connecting to Mahonji. So it was again Mahonji's uh, wish that I speak about this. So, well, uh, <laughs> Well, on that note, um, since I have talked about my childhood many times, I don't want to go deep into that. But uh, my childhood was not a very good uh, place that I, that any uh, kid want to be in. It was a very uh, turbulent times in terms of not having support, uh, not having any uh, cuddly affection. So I kind of grew up in a very uh, distant manner. And, uh, you know, when you have somebody when you look up to, um, and, uh, the person, they were, I'm not saying one particular person, few people, you know, they kind of uh, disappoint you. And that happened numerous times in my life. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, there were times that, uh, when you want to feel protected as a child, that wasn't the case. And, uh, as I grew up, I experienced that, uh, uh the same male figures, you know, who are supposed to be uh, protective figures. They were not really protective figures. They were just um, just males looking at females. And I just didn't, uh, that that uh, thought was always in my mind and that kind of deterred me from uh, being close to any male figures. Like, even though I wanted to have a father figure, like, a, you know, a, like, but somehow the male figures where, you, where they look at women in a particular way, that always uh, shied, I shied away from uh, getting close to anybody. So um, even though I had my husband at that time with me, we were together for a long time. Uh, I've had, you know, good times with him. Uh, God was, uh, God has blessed me to um, have that positive thing in my life uh, very early on in my life. So we kind of both grew up together. So I had all the happiness, you could say, in terms of uh, traveling, eating, hanging out. You say it, I've experienced it all. So there's no lack of uh, that, okay, I've missed out on something pleasurable in my life. Uh, but that uh, that feeling of, you know, having that parental support or that uh, 
something was always missing in my life. It's, it, it, Anyway, so that uh, and the spirituality was not in my life early on because, you know, where I grew up is like that. Uh, well, after I got married in 2003, I, uh, my spiritual life began after my marriage uh, because uh, in North India, you know, uh, it's not like that. But when I went to South India for the first time after my marriage, uh, it was uh, Lord Krishna's temple. I, I talked to everybody about this temple. It's uh, Bhagwan Krishna's temple. And it's called Guru Ayrapan. And uh, he, you know, just as I walked into his sanctum scrotum, um, I was blown away by the love that poured through my heart. And uh, I couldn't believe that I was feeling such such pure uh, feeling that I felt in my life. I've never experienced that. That's I knew that was something more powerful than I've ex- ever experienced any physical love or any kind of uh, love that people call on this earth you know it was beyond that so i was obsessed with that feeling that i then my whole journey began from that moment until 2018 that i was obsessed with going to temples because uh, i found out through my uh, my trip in kerala that there was a lot of past karma of my family not my immediate mom and dad but i'm talking about uh, my ancestral karma that was heavy on on uh, our family and that's why we were all suffering so that uh, knowledge made me uh, was like wow there's a lot of burden that's why we're suffering so i took it all on myself that okay i have to somehow amend this and uh, and we met a lot of astrologers in india and somehow they were all able to help us to do various pujas go go here go there so this obsession started from 2004 until 2018, I would say. Every year I was in India doing something. It was nonstop. It was taxing, but I enjoyed it because I love temples. Um, but having uh, gone through those periods, um, uh, one, um, I, I don't want to go t- too much into the details, but my spiritual journey started from uh, uh, having... Uh, uh, having gone through some heavy periods of uh, losing my job and asking God, do you even exist? Because, you know, after having my first child, I went through school. I had to separate myself from her, uh, graduated as a mom and uh, got a job and uh, lost it within a year. It was a very painful experience, and uh, it was almost like they was they were going to send me to prison if I had not left the job. It was such a bad time, and I just questioned, like, does God even exist? You know, it was really, really painful. But somehow um, I was rescued because God is benevolent. You know, in, deep, in dark times, we may not know that he's there, but uh, it took a while for me to come out of that uh, moment, but I... Uh, I did. And I, uh, I went to this Hawaii temple that I always speak of. Uh, in the, going to the temple somehow gave me a new insight into being a mom because uh, in America, nobody really tells you to be a mom. It's all a uh, working environment. It's, if you're not working, if you're not successful, if you're not a career woman, you are looked down upon. But in that temple, I was given a different light that it's okay to be a mom. It's okay to stay home. It's okay to uh, uh, do things that mothers did back in the back in the days, which we have forgotten. So, uh, especially that information coming to me in front of Lord Shiva's temple. You know, it's a very powerful temple, and one of their uh, priests. You know, he's very deeply connected to the temple. It's him telling me this. It was as if God Himself was telling me this, uh, and that gave me so much of uh, clarity. And that calmed my mind down. And uh, But still, I asked God, where are you? You know, I, I, how come I have all this, I have a child, I have, um, you know, a good husband. Uh, why am I not happy? You know, I asked that question. And I just forgot about it. It was July of 2012. And uh, my whole spiritual journey started from there. I uh, somehow started getting into more astrology and uh I got in touch with um, finding, uh, getting my hands on autobiography yogi and other uh, interesting books. But it was autobiography yogi that caught my attention the most because, uh, again, uh, I told you that it's the love of 
something love that is not of this earth that was uh, always attracted me because i told you i've always had the love of my husband love of my uh, child they always loved me but there was something always higher that i was looking for something i couldn't explain it but that book gave me that glimpse that uh, love of a guru uh, love of connection to the divine how yogananda ji felt for his uh, guru ji and uh, baba ji you know all this stuff just really impacted me and i genuinely started seeking uh, you know maybe baba ji could be my guru maybe if he's alive maybe i can contact him because i thought i could because i have been doing a lot of uh, uh, going to a lot of temples and uh, i started doing a lot of sadhana uh, in terms of uh, i had given up uh, you know i used to drink alcohol once in a while i'd gave that up in 2012 i had been a vegetarian for half of my life uh started doing meditations helping people people that i didn't like guys to serve them uh so all this stuff happened so i said yes i will do more intense sadhana so i can be more pure that my whole idea was to be more pure because i knew that purity is what attracted the masters not the malice not the lies and cheat and ego and i had to give up my ego and invite people who had hurt me the most and serve them take care of them that was the hardest thing but i did that and i think uh, that's what must have gotten the attention of uh the higher masters because i had to give up that ego aspect in me uh where i said okay i'm not going to bend down to their level i will do what's best for me because i'm not here to um to do petty things i'm here for something higher i always felt it in my heart and i've had good uh, will power to change uh i've always been strong in in that sense if i make up a mind i will do something uh so uh so as i uh in this time i had uh, my second daughter and uh uh when she was born i uh, actually i forgot to mention that before she was born i had a desire to go to kailash mansarovar uh and i was trying to conceive for a couple of years i couldn't conceive but somehow she came i became pregnant and i could not go and uh i felt like it was god's way of telling me it's not your time to come to me take care of this child and then when you are ready you can come so i took that as at that moment it didn't feel like that because i was deeply hurt that god doesn't want me all that stuff uh but uh, as she came uh there was a sense of deep love in my heart because i didn't feel that with my first child uh after kashi was born i didn't feel that deep love for the second child when she was born it was deep love in my heart and uh it was a very different experience as a mother um but uh within 2 years of her birth uh i started that one when well, she was one and a half i started searching how else i can go meet baba ji that the drive was still there right so i started searching for uh, badrinath i knew that baba ji's ashram was somewhere there uh, and i would do anything to go there um, even with the one and a half year old uh, 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 child but i found out that okay kids cannot go there as higher elevation so i was like okay somehow and all this uh i came across bab uh, mohan ji's blog how i uh, baba ji's uh, baba baba ji beyond beyond definitions so that kind of uh, uh connected me to mohan ji on the first time um, you know i was really intrigued by this person that uh, who was called mohan ji at that time uh, who is this person uh and i got into his blogs got into his uh other teachings uh but they were still not interesting me as much because he was not the person that i was looking for because um, we all have our concepts right and uh and uh what happened is uh, uh but uh, of course divine knows uh, what's best for us so what happened is uh, during this time i came across this uh, uh blog written by uh, rajesh kamath and uh, in there there was a talk about uh, shiva kavacham and uh, how it transformed people and i was obsessed with kailash and shiva and all those things just uh, again blew my mind away and i had to I had to contact mohan ji i had to know how can i get my hands on this uh, but uh, they told me no i you cannot just get shiva kavacham that easy you have to go through this process because it's very sacred so i thought okay i have to go through something i'll i'll wait for it so they told me to connect to mohan ji and i started doing that and they also connected me to somebody who was in charge of uh, uh getting people to uh um 
uh, connecting to Mohanji, uh, somebody who was an ambassador or something like that. Uh, so I connected to her and um, she told me to do a couple of things, uh, meditations and stuff. So I did all those things. I did Power of Purity. I did 360. I did all of those things and I felt immense uh, connection to Mohanji. And I, it was as if that I have known him forever. That connection that I felt, it was amazing. Uh, I would just, uh, you know, uh, listen to songs and I would Baba songs or uh, Guru Paduka's uh, Sotram. I would just connect instantly and add that love would flow in my heart and I couldn't explain it. So, uh, and this time I, you know, I couldn't imagine living my whole life uh, except with my husband, without my husband or my child, but other people, they have always heard me. So it was very hard for me to accept that something could give me this much of happiness. My mind was not happy with that. So uh, as I was following Monji on Facebook uh, and a lot of his friends, uh, not his friends, I'm sorry, a lot of his uh, uh, followers, I would say, or disciples. Uh, I saw that uh, they were kind of uh, uh, deleting their photos and deleting, uh, they were not connecting to Mohanji anymore. It, it happened on a couple of occasions. I saw two, three people had just kind of blocked Mohanji and deleted all their pictures. And that kind of worried me, like, why is uh, this happening? Uh, if this person is uh, a great guru, why is... Why are these people leaving him? It was a it was very confusing to my mind, uh, especially who uh, was not stable in terms of uh, that father figure type of uh, or somebody you look up to, because I've had my share of uh, uh, issues in the past. So uh, those kind of doubts cropped uh, creeped up in my mind, and I was not connecting to him the same level. And the person, the ambassador, supposedly was supposed to come visit Mohanji in April, and uh, I found out that uh, she won't be coming to uh, with Mohanji that April. Uh, there was a retreat in Virginia. She won't be coming. And that really, uh, really made me feel like, why isn't she coming? All those doubts started pouring uh, deep in my heart that something is wrong. You know, he's not worth it. He's this, that. Uh, it was all my mind's play. Uh, so... Uh, long story short, I met Mohanji in March of 2016, uh, and and uh, so when I met him again, I, I was full of doubts, right? And uh, when I met him, he was very cold with me, and I couldn't tell that why was this man so cold because I felt so much love for him. But in physically meeting him, I didn't feel any of those things. He looked very dark, very uh, distant, very uh, not... Uh, the the person that I was uh, falling in love with as a guru, right, or a person I looked up to, uh, it was very difficult. And uh, and uh, but what happened is uh, I got initiated into conscious kriya. I did uh, a couple of other things that uh, I had good experiences, but the doubt was still there. So as I come back from uh, come back from the retreat, I. Uh, as soon as I come back, I wake up the next morning, I see an email from uh, this ambassador person, the same person that uh, Devi, uh, Devi Mohan was mentioning. It was the same person. I, I, it doesn't matter who she is, but it's the same person. And uh, she told me uh, to be an email that uh, sh she's no longer with Mohanji because he has done this, this, this to her. And he's done this to a lot of other women, blah, blah, blah. And it really tore me apart because... Uh, I, uh, you know, I believe in my intuitions very strongly, and I know that God connected me to Him for some reason. And but I, and I was like, how did I let myself fall into this trap of, uh, of uh, trusting a man who was again one of those creeps from my past to where I had to go through molestation, and my my friend's uh, father almost tried to grab me and touch me, and now that I have to go through this other person who's also doing this to other women, you know, I couldn't handle that. It was very, very painful for me to go through it. Uh, and it was not something that I, I enjoy talking about. This is not a diff easy subject for me to talk about. But I had asked Mohanji to be here with me so I could talk about this easily with you guys, because it's not something that I'm proud of. Uh, because, but again, he has given me the clarity to talk about this today with you guys. Uh, I did go through this because... Uh, uh, 
it was very painful time for me from April of 2016 to May. I cried pretty much every day. I think I aged so much in that time. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I would just cry. It was so pathetic, I, the, the situation I was in. I couldn't, I don't know, it was not a good thing. But uh, but I, in the meantime, I had signed up to go to Kailash with Mohanji. It already had happened. And uh, uh, so that was, you know, people were contacting me. Okay, what's your size for this? What's this? What, you know, all these things were happening and I was not interested. I even stopped practicing consciousness career. I was like, oh, how can I do this for a man who's doing this? Uh, but, you know, deep down, uh, something was just telling me that, uh, uh, I don't know, something was just, uh, I, I couldn't tear away from him. I couldn't leave him. Something was just still gluing me with him. And uh, it was May of May of 2016, and it was uh, Akshay Tritiya. Akshay Tritiya means in astrology or any other person would know that's when both the sun and the moon are in the best of positions. That's like the highest. It's the best and auspicious day of the whole year. Like uh, the energies of the universe are so positive that, uh, you know, it's like uh, nothing can go wrong. If you initiate anything on that day, nothing can go wrong. So that day I got this, uh, I got this message from somebody that, uh, that uplifted me for the first time in my life. And I said to uh, God that day, because energy is so powerful, I spoke to, I told God mentally that if Mohanji is pure and Mohanji says who he is, then let me go to Kailash with him. But if he's false and if he is not uh, trustworthy, then please stop this Kailash from happening. Because I had intent to go to Kailash and I filled this application out before I, um, uh, went to uh, before I had this experience, so let it happen, uh, you know. And that gave me a lot of peace inside that I had surrendered to the higher Almighty and was not taking the ownership. Uh, but long story short, uh, Kailash did happen, and uh, and I, but I wanted to speak to Mohanji himself because I didn't want to hear from other people what they were talking about him because it would not be fair. So I couldn't speak to him because I would not be able to speak clearly, right? I would start crying. So I wrote a letter to him and I, the first day I saw Mohanji, you know, I, of course, uh, I hugged him. It was, it was like nothing has happened. And then I told him I wanted to speak to him. He said, of course. And then the same day I saw him speaking to somebody and I got up and I gave him the letter. I said, Mohanji here, please uh, let me know the response. And then uh, eventually he did speak to me and uh, he told me, that what had occurred, and he said that you're a woman yourself. You know that when uh, when uh, uh, a man looks at you a certain way, uh, you know how it is. You do you feel those things from me? I said no, I don't. So he was very clear. He explained everything to me, and uh, I was content with what he said. I was, uh, but still, that 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 impression in my mind from my childhood uh, was still there, and that's the clarity that I have gotten from Mohanji in this past four years. I mean, it just uh, the clarity just came to me yesterday that why I had to go through these doubts. I'm just mentioning this to you right now. I don't want to go further into this because uh, he showed me that I had to go through all these doubts with him. It was necessary to go through them because the impression was so deep from my childhood that men failing me, I couldn't trust them. So he brought all these things out of me by creating this drama where I had to go through this to release it. Doubt after doubt, every year there was a doubt about him and women, him and women. It kept on happening over and over again until the clarity just came to me yesterday. This is why you had to go through this. And he gave me that clarity because I asked him, I need your help to be with me. You can't talk about this. It's not easy for me. So uh, so I'm very happy that he did give me that clarity. And I'm, I can say that I had to go through this because this is stemming from my childhood, where men disappointed me. Uh, they always saw me as a piece of person they could abuse or molest or whatever they could because of the way I looked or whatever it was. And it started from childhood onward. And uh, he was not one of those people, but my mind was seeing him from that lens of those people. He's just a mirror. He was, he was just showing me what I was uh, reflecting Okay. Having said that, uh, uh, that was how I met Mohanji. So, okay, I 
from now, I just want to talk about uh, how certain uh, events in my life with Mohanji has transformed me. Because uh, despite that, uh, all these doubts were there, you know, there were, I lived with those doubts and, uh, but he was always there as a mom or dad holding me. And uh, the most memorable experience for me was, um, there's many experiences, but I know he saved my life in Kailash in 2016, even though with all these doubts, he was there for me. Uh, I remember uh, it was during a monster over trip. I, since uh, he had told me that I had a lot of uh, family karma, family ancestral stuff, that's why I was pulled to Kailash. That's the reason I was driven to go to Kailash. So um, during, uh, as I was, I remember as we stopped in Kailash, Mansarovar, especially Mansarovar, uh, we got off the bus and I saw that Mohanji and all uh, his PAs, all the people are just rushing into the water and I, here I am standing, freezing. I, you know, I hate the feeling of cold. And uh, so I somehow managed to change and try to get in the water and uh, it was so cold so cold it was like took my breath away I couldn't even move when at that time I saw Mohanji is coming out of the water like he's all everybody did a vishakam on him and here I was like so slow trying to walk towards him and I just reached to him and I you know um, I uh, um, he saw me I touched his feet under the water and he saw me and he took the water and he put it over my head and that somehow that water was so warm that I forgot all my shivering and I was able to disconnect from that uh, cold aspect. And I uh, I went and took many dips uh, uh, for my parents, for my ancestors, for every person that I knew that I could think of, my kids who couldn't be there. Uh, it was like about 70, 80 dips. And in that cold water, it was a lot for me. I cried with each dip. It was a very intense moment for me. So I remember uh, at that moment it was happening, I wasn't aware of how much energy that was being lost, getting lost for me. And then I was coming out of the from the uh, lake and saw Mohanji is staring at all the people in the lake. Uh, but he was presiding, he was standing and there was Baba's, just like Baba's statue like that. It was right by Mansar over. I, I was weeping and crying out loud and I got out of the water and did Abhishekum and Baba and uh, Mohanji's right there and I just I had no energy and my husband had to pull me out and I remember it was Tina, Arya and Bimal somehow managed uh, to help me change into my clothes because uh, I had no energy left and I was just lying there shivering and cold uh, couldn't believe that I was there uh, that the cries were coming very deep within and I couldn't get warm for some reason it was very intense uh, I was just crying, crying for 30 minutes, and then I saw that uh, Mohanji came by speaking to my husband. But he asked, "How is she?" And Bimal said that, "Oh, she took many dips in the river, uh, in the lake, and now she's not feeling well." So he said, "Okay." And then I, all I know that I was crying and I'm staring at Kailash, and then I saw him sit down, like I'm right here lying down, and then he's sitting right there, uh, like a little few feet away from me. And he sat there, I'm not sure for how long, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but I had, I knew he was there, but uh, uh, but my focus was on Kailash. And uh, as he sat there, I started getting heat in my body. And some energy came into my body. And I felt like it was all him reviving me from whatever place I was stuck in. And after that happened, I was able to get up and eat something. And uh, we did Homa. It was a very good experience. So I believe uh, in that moment he gave me a new life because I think I left all my old self uh, in that moment and I was reborn uh, with his grace, even though I was foolish enough to not to see it at that moment because I was immature and full of doubts again. Anyways, uh, uh, that's my first story with Mohanji, my first grace of Mohanji. And... Uh, then I will just go in chronological order of how different events led to uh, different moments in my different moments led to different transformations in my life. Um, so, uh, as uh, most of you don't know that uh, I, since I was uh, since I became mom, I used to people used to make fun of me that I was not a good mom. Uh, 
because I never received love as a child. Uh, uh, so I, how can I give love when I don't know what love is? Uh, as uh, you know, how can you love something when you don't know what if you don't love yourself? That's I should say appropriately. So I never really know how to connect to my children. And uh, I used to, ever since I met Mohanji, I would somehow, after, uh, I would just pray to give, make me a better mom. That was my constant prayer. Make, make me a better mom because I got so many things from people, you're not a good mom. That's all I heard. It used to hurt me so much. So, uh, so what happened is uh, in uh, 2017, my mom saw... Uh, Mohanji in, his, in her dream and uh, she saw her parents and somehow she said oh I have and then I said okay let's go to Kailash then maybe you know I somehow didn't uh, I, I had forgotten to think about her parents during my dip in 2016 I said let's go to Kailash again so I, I went with her that year and uh, it was purely to help my mom it was there was no like I want to go there for myself it was just for my mother just to be there for her, even though uh, my mom and I uh, have uh, difficulty traveling because she's like a princess <laughs> and I'm a little bit more old, caduce, you want to call it, like a very different, more disciplined mom. It's very easygoing. So it was difficult to travel with her, but I went anyway. Uh, so uh, so happens that uh, Mohanji, as soon as he sees me, he started calling me uh, something called Bhatia. I was like, why is he calling me Bhati? I couldn't question him. He kept on calling me that. But anyhow, uh, what happened in that trip is that uh, two things happened. Uh, I received a lot of love from people. And uh, I realized that since I was there selflessly to be with mom, uh, Monji, or and the gurus allowed me to experience that selflessness uh, through other people. It was a very beautiful experience for me in comparison to 2016, where I didn't have a good experience because I was full of ego and all that other, uh, all the good stuff, right? So 2017 was a different experience for me. I experienced a lot of love and uh, transformation through love. Uh, I saw Mohanji in different light. It was very loving to see him and spend time with him. Uh, one thing I remember clearly is that uh, one devotee had a shivalingam in his hands and he brought a mansar of water from in a bottle and he asked Mohanji, can you please bless the shivalingam? And Mohanji said, okay, can you please pour the uh, mansarova water on the lingam? And uh, as this person was doing that, my mom, my cousin, myself, and this other person was standing right next to Mohanji, and he was pouring the mansarova water on the lingam. And we were all chanting, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. And then Mohanji said, drink the water that's being poured on the lingam. And we all took it and we drank it. And it was, to my amazement, it was... Uh, uh, not monster water, but it was rose water. And I was like, why does it taste like rose water, Monji? And he said, oh, this is blessings from uh, Kailashji for you, all of you. And he just stopped talking. Uh, I don't know what that meant. Maybe I felt uh, I just didn't want to think too much about it at that time because uh, I never asked him. It was his blessings to us. I accepted it, and I am grateful for that experience. And I haven't shared this experience with a lot of people. I'm just sharing it with you guys that how Mansarova was transformed into rose water by his grace for some reason. And what most important thing that happened to me in that trip was uh, what happened next. Uh, um, so we we had two buses coming to Mansarova, and uh, Monji was in bus A, I was in bus B. But uh, as we were turning back from Mansur over to go to our hotels, Monji came into Bus B and he was sitting right in front of my seat. I was like, okay. As I walked in, I, he's there staring at me. I'm like, okay. I sat right behind him. Uh, and at that moment, one other person that uh, was traveling with, with us, um, he came and uh, he said, oh, how come he was just basically ta talking to me. He said, how come you're always following me? You're always with me. Uh, even when Kailash trip uh, first happened, you were there. Now you're here again. We always are in each other's company. And I just laughed it off. Like, yeah, you're like my uh, brother. You know, we were probably together in our last life. And then Monji just uh, cut me off saying, no, he's not your brother. He is your son from your past lives that you thought you had lost. And uh, I was like, what? I We both looked at each other. It was kind of a very confusing statement. But uh, again, I'm not going to question him. Uh, we were all tired and we just kind of let it go. Uh, but that trip uh, uh, opened another dimension for me because he said he allowed me to 
connect to something, somebody from my past. And uh, that deep connection was probably there because of that uh, experience uh, from, uh, because of that uh, connection. Uh, but uh, the full in, the intensity of that experience was not felt until I, uh, same year, September of 2017, uh, Swami Bhaktananda, who is another disciple of Mohanji, he had come to uh, uh, Virginia for a Maitri retreat. And uh, in that retreat, uh, we did Homa. And uh, somehow after the Homa, I got this uh, this uh, transference or intuition that uh, uh, that I had uh, somehow left this child that whoever was Mohanji is mentioning I had left this child abandoned this child as uh, as uh, in my past life and uh, that pain had led me to create a lot of walls around me which uh, which prevented me from loving my children in this life remember I told you that I was not able to love my children so this experience was shown to me, not shown, it was just there. Somehow then it was just there. I don't know how to explain it. But that gave me clarity. And then I uh, spoke to Swami Bhaktananda. And again, Swami Bhaktananda is, uh, uh, again, very connected to Mohanji. So he said, yes, this is what happened. And uh, but he said a couple of things, not important for this session. But uh, what I, during uh, one of the times, uh, in that session, uh, I felt that we were dancing. It was it was like uh, uh, something like a uh, free flow dancing, and then I f- my, we were supposed to have our eyes closed, and I felt uh, my I had my eyes closed dancing, and I felt some somebody come behind me, and I could smell it was Monji's perfume, cologne, and that uh, person touched the back of my heart, and in that moment, I saw this uh, person from the bus kind of telling me that uh, this is, you know, don't be stuck in the past. Uh, you know, now you have your own kids in this life, take care of them, love them. And uh, something triggered my heart center to open up in such love that I have never experienced. There was so much pain, so much pain that I couldn't stop crying for three, four days after that. Uh, but it, It was very beautiful because after I came out of that trance state of just crying for four days, I was able to connect to my children on a deeper level. Uh, I saw the cute little things they were doing, which I was ignoring before. And uh, and I'm so grateful to Monji uh, for listening to my prayers, which I was asking deeply that to make me a better mom. And he did fulfill my promise to be a better mom uh, in that moment. Because since then, I have only gotten better with kids. Now I am working with kids. I do kids programs. And he's constantly showing me that uh, that is my way of uh, being in this world to help children. And uh, that's a deep lesson for me. So he's given me a new window of uh, opportunity because of kids. So um, anyway, um, the next gift that I got from Mohanji was... uh, Again, uh, in, in 2018 of Peru trip, um, this is something very, uh, I don't want to go deep into because this is really deep and I don't want to talk openly about this. But uh, uh, what happened in that trip was that I uh, received my three session from Devi Mohan and uh, I was told in that trip there that I had some kind of uh, blockages because I was uh, some kind of this person in a church that uh, uh, was very deeply connected to the God and, uh, but the dogma, dogmatic uh, people who were uh, believing in scriptures and stuff who would not be able to help anybody, uh, they were somehow preventing me from speaking up. So that prevented my throat chakra to be blocked. So uh, all this stuff happened. And, and after that, uh, my three session that I had with her, I got really ill uh, and, uh, but in that sickness, in that uh, I felt that it was Monji's grace that he took a lot away from me. And uh, what I felt after that trip was uh, there was uh, uh, he connected me somebody from my past life, I believe, because it felt like at that at that time to me, uh, I had to meet this person to trigger some things in me to release uh, this person from my life, uh, which is was not it was not easy for me to 
go through because I was already married uh, at that time. And this had to do with uh, maybe uh, another person, another husband from past life. But again, uh, we are on this path of uh, dissolution and we have to face every single thing that is coming our way and we have to face it bravely. And then uh, there's no such thing as, oh, I don't want to go through this experience. You have to go through every experience because in the in the eyes of karma, you have to experience it to let go. You can't say, I'm going to run away from it. People who run away from it will never progress in this path. So I had to accept that uh, experience and uh, uh, and uh, move forward. Uh, but what I ex- I think most of us who went to Peru 2018 experienced a lot of uh, sexual energy in us after we returned back because Peru is a feminine energy and feminine is a Kundalini energy. Uh, so when we came back from uh, uh, Kailash, there was high sexual energy that I felt that I have not felt in God knows years. Uh, and then I spoke to Devi Mohan. I texted her, is this normal? Uh, she said, yeah, this is just a, you know, Kundalini energy. Just, uh, it's not going to be like that forever. So enjoy it. Uh, so it was very dynamic. I know you could feel like what going to a high energy place like Peru or with Mohanji could do that. It really activated that dormant energy. Uh, and what I experienced from this is just embracing it, fully accepting what's happening. But it brought in a lot of creativity in my life after that. I was able to uh, write. Uh, you know, I used to love writing as a child, which had completely lost after coming to America because being bombarded that you're not good enough, you're not this, you know, always all the things I had to go through. I've forgotten that skill. But coming back from Peru, I got this skill again of uh, being expressive, being creative, and because uh, that's what mother, mother's energy is. So what happened uh, that uh, I was so shocked that uh, we had to... Uh, I wrote this blog for Mohanji uh, when the disciple is ready or something like that, you know, how I transformed through Mohanji. And I did that in 30 minutes without stopping. And it was all the energy of Peru, I feel like, uh, you know, it was that powerful. So, uh, you know, uh, we shouldn't judge any energy for something, you know, we Indians or people, we judge energy as sexual or it's bad. You know, I think we just have to embrace that it is energy. It is, you just have to accept that it's happening and no, not judge it. And that's what I wanted to um, explain in this thing is a lot of women, a lot of uh, people that we meet, uh, they, they kind of shy away from talking about this aspect of, you know, uh, uh, what am I going to do with this energy? You just have to experience it. That's all it is. And if you're going through that, uh, you have you have to face everything that comes out uh, in this path of uh, disillusion. Uh, and uh, that's... <laughs> I'm almost at the end. I only have a couple of more things to share with you guys because uh, I uh, I think the next thing that transformed me uh, after Peru was uh, 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 going to retreat with Mohanji in uh, Virginia. And uh, actually, I forgot to mention one important thing to you guys. Uh, In 2016, Kailash, I had asked Mohanji to give me a name and uh, he gave me a bunch of names uh, from a letter that I had chosen. And uh, somehow I didn't, those names didn't appeal to me. So uh, I just wanted to mention that this name change that I received from Monji was happening since 2016. But uh, what happened in 2018 uh, uh, retreat with Monji was that uh, uh, we did a homa and I caught up to Mohanji and somehow this whole idea of name change came to me. And I told Mohanji, you know, Mohanji, I have everything, uh, but somehow I don't feel complete inside. I feel something is missing. Some part of me is just, there's a big hole there. Can you please give me a name that can complete that for me? Because I, I don't want to exist like this. He's like, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. He just like walked away from it. Uh, and then um, at this time, uh, uh, the last, uh, I think uh, last day, um, uh, he I had him, we went to see him in his room. Uh, there was a lot of other people there and he kind of yelled at me, like kind of very firm with me. He's like, uh, uh, you know, you are not to, what, I'm not sure what exactly he said, but what he was trying to tell me was that even when people ask you about me, for a single second, you're still doubting me. 
you're you're not stable you're not firm in your thoughts i was so embarrassed at that moment because i thought that nobody would know that because i know i still had those thoughts in my head about doubts and i was so embarrassed in that moment because he put me on the spot and he's like you know you're uh, you ask these people none of these people doubt me but you are still doing it and he was so firm with his eyes and the way he looked at me and i, I was like shaken up and i was really i couldn't believe what was happening and uh, uh that trip was very diff- difficult for me because as we were leaving that uh, virginia retreat i went up to him as emoji uh you haven't given me a name yet you told me you will give it to me at end of the retreat and he just looked at my eyes and he said oh not yet not yet and then i said well thank you for yelling at me before being firm with me before because my parents themselves are never firm with me you know i liked it that you actually yelled at me for the first time i really like it um because it shows that you care it was so stupid for me to say that but uh he said i wasn't yelling at you i was just yelling at this uh that uh barrier that you have in you that is not preventing things from entering you you're just preventing a lot of things so i'm yelling at that uh that uh force field that you have around you so there's a tear in that thing now and uh you can either go uh you can either come closer to me or you can either leave me now it's up to you and those words were very painful for me to hear especially after you know i had uh um applied to be in acharya and i didn't know what was going to happen with that and when he's saying that to leave me i couldn't tolerate hearing that because uh, there was nothing else that even with those doubts i still i somehow something kept me with him i loved him but it was very hard for me to express that to him and uh, it was very painful to again go through it after that retreat was why is this happening blah 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 you know uh, but again it was his wish to make something happen for me he did something to me in that moment and i had to go through some turmoil which i did uh uh long story short uh, this is my last experience that i want to share with you guys uh like uh, how uh uh during the acharya training i no actually no there's one more thing before that uh what happened is uh, there was a maitri session with swami bhaktananda in uh, april of 2019 uh this was done after a whole year and biji sagar she's passed away she allowed me to speak to swami ji because i had a question to him and uh i spoke to him briefly and then all of a sudden um uh, in the end he's he stopped talking and he looks at me intently this is swami bhaktananda nath mohan ji but he became very intense and then he said you know what you look like bhavani i was like okay what what did you call me he said oh you look like bhavani and i was like what does that mean he's like oh your energy is very dynamic you ask you bet your husband he'll tell you what that means i was like okay and i forgot about it i told him all this is what swami bhaktananda said and that's it so two two months down the road i met mohan ji again for acharya training and i um, reminded him again father uh, you have not given me a name he said yes yes i will give it to you after this training <laughs> i love it he's so nonchalant about things you know we take things so seriously he's like yeah yeah you know your <laughs> your uh, your uh, whatever you're thinking is uh, you know i'll get to it so uh, we had a good time during that uh, acharya training we learned a lot and then uh, on the last day of our training uh, you know he looks no actually he said to me uh, when i asked him mohan ji haven't given me a name he said yes i already gave you a name i said no you haven't he's like yes i have I'm like okay you have given it to me on the last day of the training uh, uh, we were leaving um, so i said mohan ji please now can i have a name you you made me wait this long <laughs> since 2016 i'm waiting uh, so he said like, yes it's uh, bhavani i was like okay I've heard this name before and it didn't click that it was the same name that Swami Bhakta had uttered to me in 2000 uh, in April of 2019 and it occurred at that time that it was him speaking through Bhaktananda telling me and that's why he had told me that I had already given you a name but I was not uh, I couldn't see that cuz how could I see that you know we have so much of maya around us but what happened after that name change was very transformative for me because uh you know you live your life as uh, one as a given name 
which was very turbulent for me, but it was necessary for my growth. So I had a, a name, Ruby, which brought in a lot of transformation in me, a lot of turmoil in me, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, things in me. But receiving this name from Mohanji had a different energy to it. Um, you see, he was calling me by Bhatia in 2017 Kailash. So he was already giving me that vibration of that ladder, Bha, Bha. He kept on calling me that. Because he said that there was an anchor in India who uh, who was who used to do a lot of interviews, so he wanted he was already infusing those vibrational energy in me uh, since 2017. So when he said Bhavani, it clicked to me that yes, okay, this all clicks to me now. Why he was doing these things, and then after I came back after receiving that name, uh, it's not that it's like you're creating a new roadmap for yourself. It's like your whole past life was like a different road roadway like you you were supposed to go like this now you've received a name now you've carved a different path for yourself which is of a different energy different frequency and uh i saw a lot of changes in me and uh there's a lot of power with that name i saw dimensions of mother started uh, just stories of mother started coming in my face people calling me telling me stories about mother uh and uh it was very unique to me because I've never felt connected to mother before. I've always connected to Shiva, but never the Shakti acts aspect. Maybe that's what I was missing uh, deep in me that I had requested Monji to give me a new name to complete me. And uh, according to Devi Amma, I had asked her what this name means. She said to me that it's about uh, whatever you wish that you want to give to others, it will come true. I don't know if that's what it meant, but I don't remember exactly right now. But it was all about giving being serving and I feel like I've been serving ever since I've gotten this name and there's so much power in it so much of femininity in it that uh, there's so much of confidence in it that uh, I feel like a transformed human being um, I don't I'm not the same person that I used to be and uh, and I think it's because of this name alone that he's given me so much power and uh, I'm forever grateful for that uh, and being in his acharya uh, you know, I had to, I'm not sure what people take it as, but uh, to me, I had, you know, you just, it's a, it, people might take it as a title, but to me, it's this very sacred, um, I have to fill in, the, these shoes have to be filled in to be an Acharya, it's not uh, that uh, he's giving me something, but I have to fill it in with my own effort, and he's helping me constantly uh, uh, believe, makes me believe in myself, and uh, giving me so much responsibility that he shows me that I can do it. And I, I think um, it wouldn't have happened if I had not received this name change. It's like a, you carved a new new path for yourself. Um, so much of clarity in, in my speech, uh, which I had suffered a lot of in my life where I could not speak properly. And I have made a video on this, so we can uh, you can watch that if you want. Um, so I... I, I'm lost of words that uh, how can I receive so much from one being in such short time? In four years, I'm a transformed human being. Uh, I couldn't have imagined that I would be doing this, uh, talking about my doubts, because uh, it's not something that I like to talk about. But now I'm here talking about it because this is to tell others that not every meeting with the master is going to be fun and they will test you because those testings are necessary to bring out all those impressions that are deeply rooted in us. And uh, most people, like you said, would have, uh, uh, like you said, when you, times get tough, we end up leaving a master because uh, we don't have the clarity. But I'm not here for, um, I'm not here for feel good. I, I've done a lot of sadhana. I have practiced. I've done things that he had mentioned. I do a lot more than what he even says. And uh, I think... Um, that has kept me going, my my own personal sadhana. You need to do your own personal sadhana to survive in this path because there's so many things happening at the same time. And uh, getting up early helps again. Uh, all these things are his teachings. You know, um, before I became an acharya, I was already following these teachings of his getting up early, doing the sadhana, doing consciousness kriya every day, uh, There was no, and doing the gratitude prayers every day. So when I became the acharya, he when he taught these things, I was like, wow, he was already programming and he was already telling us from before what you need to do, but we were not, most of us were not awake. Uh, so, you know, he's he's there guiding us 
silently, but we have to open our eyes. And uh, I think um, one thing that helps is getting up in the morning because it brings your awareness to a much higher level. And uh, personal sadhana matters a lot. A lot of people think that they don't have to do any sadhana. You have to do your sadhana. Unfortunately, you cannot run away from that. Uh, if you want, uh, he can only do so much for you. You have to put in your own time, like he did from 2 to 8 o'clock when he was not Mohanji himself. Um, well, I think I have said enough for this uh, session, and I'm uh, grateful to all of you for being on this journey with me. I'm, I'm nobody, first of all. So uh, even being here on this platform, listening to me, um, it means a lot to me. If you could get anything, that means that uh, it was all his grace that you were able to get something from this. Um, not every path is going to be rosy. There, There's rough roads, but those rough roads are only for our benefit. And uh, if you're brave enough like a lion, I think you can take anything, then then you're then you're good to go on this path, and um, just stay just stay to him, stay with him, and uh, every difficulty that comes, it's given only by him to make you stronger, and I'm a living uh, testament of that, because I didn't have that rosy meeting with him. If I had the way, I think my mind would have made me leave him a long time ago, but I listened to my deep deep inside me, and I stuck with it. Um, so after four years of being with him, I could say that he's given me clarity to why I had to go through that. And it's only happened yesterday. Only yesterday it happened. Not before. Because I was meant to talk about it today, so he gave me the clarity. So that's how it is. When you're meant to receive something, you will receive it at that moment, not before, not after. So on that note, I was grateful to Monji for being here with me. Otherwise, I would not be able to talk like this. Um, so thank you, Monji. Thank you to all of you. Uh, thank you to Guru Mandala. Thank you to Baba. Thank you.